close to letting people in. No, sir. Yeah, I'm almost ready to start letting them in. I'll wait until the last minute, like they wait till 10 after to even come to the bloody meeting. Oh, did they say that? <laughs> yeah, that's so common. I don't want people to do that. All right. Go live. And I'll start recording. Okay, so it's time to let the animals in. <laughs> Here we go. There's a new face, Susie Quinn. Another new face. Look at all the new faces. Welcome, everybody. There they come. It's funny how everybody's picture is smiling, but the actual person is not. Just busted you, Sue Ellen. <laughs> nine we should have about 20 maybe 30 people coming today trying out for cheerleader when i was in high school i got marked off because i wasn't smiling apparently i can't think and smile at the same time <laughs> i finally figured it out by the time i was a senior <laughs> Sometimes YouTube just doesn't want to cooperate, so I'm not going to bother with it. All right, we're going to start recording, even though I know that there are still a lot of people who are going to come. And record, record. How to properly put your pictures on a website. Let's mute That's everybody and... We don't have to get feedback. 
I'm really just dragging my feet. I, we've got 50 some odd, almost 60 people registered. So I'm expecting about 25 or 30 people. I need to figure out a way to entice those who like to come late to come early. And a little bit more. So, Ellen, you're a developer, isn't that right? Marketing. So you have trouble with images? Is it kind of a pain sometimes? Um, I do. Uh, of course, I'm working with small businesses and nonprofits, so they send me stuff that's basically crap. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, they send me documents they want me to post, so I have to make it a PDF or an image or something like that. So, um, yeah, how to do that and still not slow down my mobile is my biggest thing. Because all these, uh, I do a lot of dog clubs, and nobody uses a computer. It's all, <laughs> it's all mobile, all of it. So yeah, so that images are a constant battle. So do you usually take images that, if they send you a PDF or something, are you just taking the image out of it, or do you need to post the whole PDF? I need to host. I need to post the whole thing. So I need to not only convert it to an image, but I also have to, you know, compress it. And I started using Smush based on being in here. Um, and it helps some, but it's not, you know, some of these things are just so horrible that it's not compressing them enough. So When you got a PDF, you make an image of it in order to display that to whether it's mobile or desktop? That's what I've been doing, and that's why I'm here, because I assume there's an easier way or better way. Yeah, throw the PDF that. in there. Just let them go to the PDF and have a thumbnail from wherever you're accessing. Say, so here's the information, and it's a PDF. Click on that, and then they go right to the PDF file. And so instead of putting that big image in there, mm -hmm. make a small thumbnail and link it to the PDF. Correct. OK. That makes sense. And then I and then I have the one guy who thinks he can do it himself, and so I have to explain it to him every time he does it. Well, the best thing that I can ever say with that is if if the owner of the site wants to get involved in some of it, um, just let him know, saying you're welcome because it's your site, but I will have to go back in and verify stuff which is then going to cost you more because then it's my time. So it's probably better if you just give it to me and throw it in. Well, I convinced him on one way, on one site. On the other one, he, he still thinks he can do it. <laughs> so, one of them, when I told him what it was going to cost, the organization, he backed off and, and lets me do it. So Yeah. A lot of times they, they understand that if they try to do stuff on their own, it's going to cost them more time than if they just let the developer do it. And yeah, that I usually let them try it. And usually the, the second time they can't do anything without contacting me anyway, they understand that it just isn't going to work as easily as they thought. Correct. So. And, and sometimes it takes things like that. OK, go ahead and give it a shot. And then they get so frustrated, they go, OK, never mind. Sorry. Right, right. And then if I have to, when they totally crash something, which I, I try to make sure they can't, but every yeah. once in a while they, they'll decide they're going to do something exciting and, and make it not work. Um, then what it costs them to fix it is expensive and they know that. So, uh, uh, but when they're new, I usually let them try it. At least <laughs> once, so. Yeah. Sometimes there's in a lot of trouble with images. <laughs> yeah. Images can be, uh, yeah, that's where most sites, which is why I decided, okay, today we're going to just talk about images and getting them together and how to use them. Most of the problems in performance on a website are due to images. And you would think, well, so what's that got to do with SEO? Everything. Because if your site isn't loading fast enough, your SEO means nothing. Well, so, that's when I get the message that, you know, the website's broken. 
no, the website's not broken. The pet thing that you just put up there makes it go so slow. It, yes. it doesn't load. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Well, I'm, I'm surprised that we haven't picked up more of the people who have registered, but that's okay. I'm going to start anyway. And um, let's see. First, I want to do this. Get that out of the way. And something I'm going to do for tools, I want you guys to have a couple of spots here. OK. Here's one. And you can click on that and take a look at it. But generally speaking, what I'm, what I'm providing to you is a method where you can uh, compress and or optimize your images before you upload them. And here comes the second one. So you've got a couple of places now that you can go and look. In fact, I'll even throw in one here and put it on the screen. so that we can go over some of the information. Got that going, and here we go. So when you're looking at your images and you're trying to either compress or uh, optimize the image, you want to do this after you've resized the image. So what am I talking about when we resize an image? In fact, I'm going to call on you again there, Suellen, because you've probably got some sites that we don't know any of those people. So let's use them as examples. Is that possible? Can you throw one into the chat and, and we'll use that? Okay. So everybody knows I have no idea who has this site or anything about it. We're just looking at images today. So when you're looking at any image to put into your site, you're thinking about what size image do you need? Now this one doesn't really have any images up except up at the top. Well, let's see if we can find a different one where there might be an image or two. Oh, this would be good enough. There are times, can everybody see this logo down here in the footer? See my mouse moving around here down in the blue area? No? What are we seeing there? You can see it? OK. So. You know that that's a pretty small image, but there are a lot of people who will upload, you know, this thousand by fifteen hundred size image in order to upload that image. Now I'm going to tell you that particular one using my handy dandy Firefox. Uh, that one, same size, hundred and thirty seven forty five, and it's the same down at the bottom. So. We know that that area needs an image of that size. The question I'm going to ask you, which is, you know, just hypothetical, really. Why would you upload a thousand pixel wide by 1500 pixel wide image for this image, which only requires 137 by 40, 145? The answer is you should not. You want to make sure that you're uploading the size that you need to upload. And I'll give you another another example here. Can everybody see this site? All the food and the health stuff? OK. If you're looking to say, what's this size image? Let's inspect that. Ignore some of the code, but we're looking just at this line here. 
Now you can see the image has just popped up and it's a 300 by 224. So that's the size you need to put in there. It's based on the theme or template that you're using. What's the size that is acts, what's the size that that spot is saying, here's the size that's supposed to be in here. In your editor or whatever that you're using to manipulate the theme and to add your images, it's going to show you what size that should be. So don't upload these huge ones. And if you've got developers who are doing the work for you, that's something that you really need to stress with them because your developers as a whole, there are many, many developers who don't consider that at all. They're in a hurry. Whatever time that they charge you for is up to them, but they're in a hurry to do it as fast as possible. And it's a lot faster to just grab whatever image that you've sent to them and slap it in there without concern with the dimensions. The dimensions need to match the area where that image will appear. If it's too big, that adds more weight. The more weight that you have in a page, the slower it gets. I'm stopping at that point because that's something that everybody needs to understand. When we talk about too much or weight or what makes a page slow, the number one thing that slows down a page are images. So you want to make sure that those images are sized correctly. And then when you have got it the correct size, that's when you want to optimize it. And if it's large enough, you want to change it to a WebP format. If the smaller that image gets, when you're somewhere around maybe 150 pixels square, you're going to find that a WebP won't uh, reduce the weight of the image. So in a smaller image, look and see, check, make it a PNG, make it a, P a JPEG, and make it a WebP. Then look at the information for each image and see which one is lowest. You'll see a number followed by a KB. Not that you need to know, but that means kilobytes. So you want the smallest number possible for that image. And you've already got the size of the image, so you don't need to worry about that anymore. So look to see which format is the least heavy which means is the lowest KB number. So you understand what you can do with images, like a show of hands or thumbs up. Tell me what you think as far as whether you think this page would be typical of a slow site. In other words, one that's got a lot of big images, so that ought to be a pretty slow page. Any, anybody agree? Disagree? Any thoughts? Would this, if you have, let, let me ask you this, raise the hands or a thumb up. Does anybody have a website that they've checked and it is loading really slow? Okay. So, does this site have more images that are larger, more images in general, just on this page, than your particular page that you're talking about? So then I'll go back to that question again. Does this page have more images than you do? Yes, no, maybe, thumbs up. About the same? Anybody? You don't know? about Bonnie? Is this, do you think this has more images or less? Just a thumbs up or yes or no? Don't compare it to the video. I know you have a video on your homepage, but think of another page. You're, you're, uh, you're, go ahead. Oops. You got on, you got on mute there. Okay, go ahead. It's not as many pictures as my, as on my website. Not as my many? Portfolio page. I have more on my portfolio page. Okay, the portfolio page. Do you have another page that you would say, yeah, there's a, I've got several pages, but only one that's got a lot. 
this particular page has more than most of your other pages? Uh, my portfolio page, and you click on to go to the description page, and the description page is just as many photos. Okay. So at least as even. What I'm trying to get to is I want to make sure that everybody understands this is not a trick. I'm trying to compare apples to apples here. So if you've got a lot of pictures on the page, I think you might say that this one doesn't have what I would say an overabundance, but it has quite a few images. So it's not like, okay, I've scrimped. And to give you another example of where people give me a hard time all the time saying, my page, my homepage doesn't have any images. I'm here to tell you that these colors in the background, the purple and the grayish and the pink, that is one gigantic image. So when you say, well, so what's the page speed on the thing? Okay. Let's go over here to Chrome. We'll open up an incognito. And going to inspect. And then I'll share my screen over there. And we'll check out Lighthouse. And remember, I said that that background image is a huge image. I'm talking, it's an SVG. And it's the full width of the page, but it's extremely heavy. And I do not run cash on this site. I'm not doing any tricks on this site other than proper image management and other good management uh, operations, services, practices. So you can see the performance is the number that you're always looking at. I could actually get this page going faster. I've just been going, you know what? 98 is pretty fast without having to do anything. So I'm good. Now I'm going to go back over to this other site where we were. And Garrison Body. OK, so everybody sees this page now, correct? So let's take a look. I'll open and go back over here to incognito. Inspect. Change the screen again. OK, so we've seen that whether you want to argue about my garrison, my TA Garrison site or not, my uh, company site, that it has just the one picture. This is more like what you guys have in your sites, all these images on the page. And this site isn't even finished yet. I have not got any cash on the page. I haven't, well, hello, what are you doing here? Incognito. So let's go back over to, I'll do a better one. When we get to checking speed, and I'm going to need to put this into your chat for you as well. So I want everybody to make sure that they copy this address, use it all the time, every page. It's even better than the incognito that I've shown you a lot of times. Incognito is fine, but if you want to test and test and test, go to PageSpeed Insights. Welcome, Walt Arthur. Missed you. Um, okay, so I'm going to share again. And we'll go to PageSpeed Insights. And... We'll analyze the page this way. So this is coming directly out of Google.
I haven't even tried to optimize the pages yet because I've just been building the site. So making sure that when you put up the images that you've got them the right size, you optimize the images, even this site with the large images at the top and the bottom, go away, and a few images in the middle, this page is fast. If you're in the 90s or higher, you've done your homework. Literally, I could get this page to 100%. Okay, so now I use uh, Joomla, but I'm going to show you one more site. This site is not mine. It's one of my customers. And it just got moved over to the A2 server from uh, SiteGround. Pretty typical web uh, WordPress site, typical for you guys too. So you'd say, well, yeah, I mean, that's a typical site, maybe something that you might build. So we're going to try that one. Let's see where that one gets us. A lot of the reason that I'm going into this is because we've talked a lot about the various things that you can do in SEO to help a site. This is a WordPress site and other than cache, I haven't done anything to the site. There are three big images on the home page that are much larger than they're supposed to be. And I'll show you those here in a second. These three images, are very large, let's see, uh, for what they, for how they appear. It's a 500 by 500 width image, but you can see that it's only 100 by 100 that's being displayed. That's the kind of thing that slows down the browser. And now you've got three of those across just right there. And then there are these. And again, this is 1,012 by 571, and it's only coming up at 550 by 310. So basically, half the image is being used. I didn't resize it just because I hadn't got that far yet. And yet, I've got this performance out of the site. This is using the cache and an A2 server that's very fast. So there are a couple of other things other than what you can do in your site that are critical. Make sure that your hosting company has good, fast servers. If you're not on a, a company that has light speed, you're going to have to do an awful lot of work, and very few companies do. I only know of two. Uh, somebody else uh, uh, knows of a site other than uh, A2 or Green Geeks that uses Lightspeed, I welcome you to join in and say, oh, yeah, these guys use it too. But a Lightspeed server really speeds up your site, even if you've done a lot of things wrong. So you want to get that performance up so that your images are not taking down the site. If you're not in the neighborhood of, say, 75% or higher, Google's not going to consider your site to be displayed in the mobile searches. Who's coming to the sites mostly? Uh, around 70% mobile devices. So if Google's saying, well, yeah, that might be a nice site, but we're not going to show it to the mobile devices because they can't use it, then you're, you're just beating yourself against the wall. You're chasing your tail. So get those numbers. Get the speed up. Now let's back up and go, okay, so how? One of the ways is to compress and optimize those images after you resize them. Okay, so how do you resize an image? I use a simple free um, image manipulation program 
called paint. Let me see if I can show you. Hey, come on now. Here's paint. It's really simple. And you can do pretty much anything that you want to do with a with an image that you can do in Photoshop. So let's just say you want to change this image from, we'll say uh, this image right now is 800 by 433. Well, we've got a really tiny spot that I want to make this image appear on the page. So I'm going to make it 100. And you see all I did was type because it was highlighted and it automatically, because maintain aspect ratio is checked, so it's going to be 100 by 54 after I click OK. The resolution, even, it's, even though it says 95 here, it's only going to be 72 in the browser. That's all the browser is capable of showing you. So don't try to make it a high resolution. There, it's done. Now your image, you just save it at that size and remember where you save it. And if it's the same name as another one, I'll just go maybe uh, thumb, if I can spell. So you'll know it's a thumbnail. Now I've set that up to be a thumbnail. So if you clicked on it, you go to the larger picture. But you can do whatever that you want. It just as I'm showing you how fast and how easy you can make it to resize an image. So now I'm going to go back to the original size. And I also want to show the variation between the images as far as one size and the KB part. So you get familiar with that. You might think that it should be faster for me to find stuff, but you have no idea all the garbage that I have on this computer. And we're almost there. We're here. There we go. All right. Oops. The image is blurry. Is that what you were saying, Sherry? The, the image in this little tiny thing when it was this size. Go back. Yes. Remember, I just used, I used any, any uh, uh, image. If you use one that has a bit more um, face or color or something like that, it wouldn't be uh, as hard to read. I'm just showing you the difference in variation. You don't have to make it 100. You can make it whatever size that you want. The fact is that using paint is a simple process to resize your image. And before I do anything more, I wanted to show you the difference in the two or difference in the images. All right. So Here's the testing thumb. It's 2.85 KB at 100 pixels by 54. Can everybody see that? Arthur, can everybody see the? Maybe I'm not showing the right screen. Yes, no? You guys are awful quiet today. Oh, maybe I have to unmute Arthur. <laughs> And I need to do this. Sorry. Okay. Arthur, can you see these files? Yep. Okay. So here's the testing thumb that I made, and you can see that it's 3 KB. And it was 68 KB. So if I decided, well, okay, well, now I want to change the format you're going to see that as I change this into a WebP, I'm just simply going to save it from the same program, but as a different type. And when you do save it as a WebP, these small images, a lot of times, they do not save much space. Save the weight, I guess I should say. 
and we're just about there. Here we go. Yeah, your screen blacked out. How about now? That's better. Okay. Can't see the your image, y'all. Obviously, the file. This one? Well, okay. Is that what you want? Just like you know what we say. Okay. It doesn't matter to me. Okay, so the if you if we look at the original, the testing, 67.6 at 800 by 433. Then you have the testing that I made is 2.85. It as a PNG file. Now, making that same small image a WebP, not bad. It saved a little bit more. It's 1.5. So as I always say, SEO is an experiment. So was checking to see if I could save a little bit more uh, weight of this image by converting it to a WebP. So I went from 2.85 to 1.50. I'm happy with that. And that process is exactly what you want to do for every one of your images because you need to get that thing as light as possible. So now I'm going to stop for a second because I want to go back and go, okay, there's, I know there's going to be questions so far. Whether it's a how-to or can you do it again or whatever it is, ask those questions. That's what we're going to be doing so that you understand how to manipulate your images. No questions? Anybody? I do. Okay, go ahead. I just want to get the name of that site. I didn't get it. The Which one? Where you're producing the images. Is it, is it paint.net? Okay, I wasn't sure which one. The image uh, manipulation, the image editing program that I was using is called paint.net. However, it's at I have to type this in. It's at getpaint.net. And let's see if I can go over there and do that. See here we are. Very simple site. And like I said, it is a free software. There's a full URL for that program. And every time that I've thought, hmm, I wonder if I can do this with paint because it didn't come as part of the default program. You search and you will find um, plugins for this program. They're free plugins. So you can find pretty much anything that you want to do to an image to install into Paint. And it gives you the instructions of how to install that thing. You just follow along with the bouncing ball and you'll get that done. But you, it's, I've been doing web development and SEO for almost 25 years. And I have stuck with two different, very simple uh, image manipulation programs. One isn't available anymore, but then that's when I switched to get paint or to paint.net. Paint.net, I've been using, you know, gotta be at least 12 years that I've been using the thing. And people have often told me, well, why don't you use Photoshop? And I can look at them and say, what for? Why would I pay hundreds of dollars to use Photoshop every month when I can do the exact same thing that I need to get done with paint.net that's free? Yeah, and I've been nice and I do uh, uh, donate every once in a while. So that's all up to you. You don't have to donate. The point is, you don't have to use really expensive software to do a lot of the image editing that you need to do. But it is critical to make sure that you work on those images 
You can get them the size that you want. You don't have to make everything teeny tiny so that it's either fuzzy or you can't see it. You just need to say, this is the size that belongs in that spot. Now I need to make it that size and then optimize that image to make it as light as possible. Does that make a lot more sense, Bonnie? I, I've been doing it in Photoshop because I use Photoshop and Illustrator to, to create images. There are reasons that people do use Photoshop. And if you're creating a lot of different things and you and I know that you are, then you have reason to use Photoshop. For the average user, I would bet that 90% of the people here, whether they are whether they have Photoshop or not, are saying, yeah, but I only use it for blah, 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 blah. Well, so you'd be better off using something simple like paint.net. But in your situation, Bonnie, you can do the same thing with Photoshop. You can, you can change the format from a PNG to WebP, and you can um, make sure that you crop the picture. That's simple enough in Photoshop. And then you can use the uh, site that I was showing you before, which is only one of a couple. I'll show you that one. The other one here. We'll take another look at this one first. This is the one that I showed you earlier. After you've changed your format and you've changed the size, now it's time to compress and optimize. So let's say, let me take that image and just to see if I can get it even uh, smaller, see if I can, uh, I think my chances are pretty slim that I'm going to change a lot, but I'll go through the process anyway so that you get what you're trying to do. And... Where's my speech here to go? And the last image that I made was the WebP, but they're not going to let me. Instead of using that image, use a bigger image so you get a better idea. Okay. How about, not bad. The short pixel is pretty powerful. I liked it. Let's see if I can find a big image. This one. Okay, and while that's working on it, let's see that image. And click for, on accept all on the cookies. Hang on just a sec. Uh, I wanted to show this thing. Oops, not chat. We want to see the image as its original. And that's this image here. Move things out of the way. Spanish lessons, and it is a 1920 by 1281 at 63.8 KB. Not bad, but let's just see how much we can save on that thing. And we'll just go. Well, it's, it's for images, you know, that are like two, three megabytes. You know, that's where it really makes the change and the difference. When you start getting into the KB, that the change is not really going to be a lot because you already have it at the minimum as it is. And that one that I'm showing. I know that the website actually has a problem with that image, and it's saying it's an uh, unacceptable format. I'm not going to get into that now, but obviously it's not what we want. So I'm going to find a big picture that hasn't been touched, if possible. This one should work. All right. So 
Let me go back to new share again. Well, it looks like you might see me in there. Here we go. This image, this header PDA, oops, sorry. Uh, that was a WebP. Move this thing around. Give me the properties there. 440, okay. That should be good enough. Well, well, you said it's if it's something in a megabyte or something, right? They could pick any of them. I'm going to pick this, and then I'm going to open it with Paint and save it as a JPEG because it's saved in a different format right now. We're just looking at different ways that. You can look at images, save them. Okay, so that's been saved. Back over here, and there's the header JP, 186 KB at 15,500. You're saying that one doesn't do very good at, at uh, less than a meg, that site? It, it'll probably reduce it some, but I mean, you know, you're at 156 KB, that's, that's pretty... It's, it's not bad for that big of an image. I'm trying to find one that I have that's way out of line. Usually, uh, I just don't have great big old images for you, too. about the one with the model? Oh, that's a gift. Yeah. Well, there's a JPEG of somebody, but it's still, they're all under a meg. Um, let me think for a second. This one. Fourteen. What? Well, having a tough time trying to find a big image. And if anybody's got one, feel free to let me know. I downloaded one. Let's go to a website and download one. That's a, that's another good question. It's like, okay, so who has a big image, gigantic image on their page? Anybody? Oh, uh, Blair, you've probably got some, right? Uh, she has a project pic she can send. Um. Yeah, I have lots of images. Uh, I would have to get it, it open. Well, there you got one. And that's a GIF. 1,000 by 64. We don't know how big it is, mm -hmm. though. But we're going to steal it, if you don't mind. Well, most of my images on Photoshop are... are uh, three to 30 images, megabytes. Let's take a look here. Uh, but not on WordPress. Let me take a look at all of them here and see. Now we don't know exactly how much this is, but let's just try it. All right. And folks, as you're watching us go through all this stuff, this is what a typical developer will do. So you'll wonder, well, how come it takes so long to just do blah, blah? Well, that's why. So let's just drop that in. Now, does this site accept GIFs? Well, it's not going to do it. OK. So, let me uh, go back and see where I dropped it. Oh, boy. Just leave me alone. 
if I stop sure that'll help. And we're It's like I'm trying to, uh, as soon as I look at one, I'm going, oh, that might work even better. Do you have one, Arthur? I can't see your screen. Hang on just a sec. Well, I'm not looking on my screen. I'm looking at different areas thinking, well, maybe I'll find a better one. I, it's amazing that I don't have gigantic images and that one that I took you just grab one from any website well like I say if there are anything over a meg then I would <laughs> I don't know a, a website to just grab a page that's or an image that's gigantic you have one in mind so that's what I'm trying to do is find a huge oh. one So let's look in there. And ah, yeah, the one that I downloaded was a clunker anyway. They don't let you grab those, Blair. They're only going to give you a, a dot. So if I go to your site, do you have any big ones in the site, Blair? Can't find an image. Oh, maybe this background. You know something that's actually a good um, thing. And this one is big, a thousand by six fifty four. I'm going to save that. Um, it's nice that we're seeing that there's not huge images but they're big enough that it's slowing down your site so uh, rest assured folks even if you don't have a megabyte image something that's that big doesn't make any difference they still slow the site down just because of the uh, dimensions and the weight even though it's under a meg okay so i've got this mountain picture and let's upload that to here from uh, Pixabay with huge images. And let's see if I can share before it finishes. That's pretty darn good. Before I go into that, I'm going to open it in paint so that we see, or actually just here on my uh, computer it is as its original form uh well that wasn't huge either 76 kb was the original size of this image and it's now down to 36.69 so yeah it reduced it by 36 percent yeah mm -hmm. and i would say that I'll put them together here in just a second. And then we'll look at that screen. All right, so now I move these zoom things out of the way. All right, so can everybody see the screen now and see these two images, the same ones? Yep. Two. Yes? Yeah. Okay, so the original is this one on the left 76 kb 74.6 so we call it 76 and the other is now 47.2 same size now as as i look at it in paint that's a pretty nice picture wouldn't everybody agree uh, if you could see it 
Okay. Clear enough, everybody? Now I'm going to open this other. Everybody see paint? See the picture? See the other picture? This is the original. This is the one that was optimized. Original. Optimized. Now, so you can tell whether I'm switching or not because it doesn't see, I can't see a darn bit of difference. Can you see me switching back and forth up at the top of the screen? Okay. There's the original. There's the optimized. So that is critical too because as you talk to your developers, they're going to say, well, it's going to lose a lot of uh, resolution. It's not going to look as good. Don't listen to them. Because 72 DPI is all that the browser can display in the first place. So if you've got a 300 DPI uh, image, and I would bet that Blair has got a bunch of 300 DPI images, once they're on the, web, the internet, your browser is only going to show you 72 DPI. So don't listen to people that are telling you you're going to lose a lot of the value, lose a lot, and visually the appearance of that image is going to be degraded. It doesn't. I just went through, we cut it in half, and you can't tell a difference. I'm going back and forth and back and forth. Can anybody raise their hand and say, yes, I see a difference? Or let me try another picture. Any of you have a picture that you'd like me to try that with? Awfully quiet today, folks. Go to my website. Go on to my portfolio page. I put it in the chat. You did? Uh, direct to you. Direct message to you. I have a three megabyte image. That would be a good one to try, Linda. How do I get to it? I sent her the, the link in the chat, and she can try it herself. Okay. Here's Bonnie's. Just click on the link and upload the image and take a look and see, you know, see how much it reduces the, uh, the image. Here's Bonnie's. Compresses, I should say. Now, aren't these all independent images is there one yeah. in particular you wanted me to see uh let's see move it down a little bit do the last one this thing yeah if she's got any kind of caching on that side you're probably going to come up with the same result you know, the smaller image it's not going to the end I don't know what's wrong. What was it supposed got, to do? Got right click protect on that. Is that what you want to do? You just wanted to see this size? You're asking me, I thought maybe it was uploading for very slowly because I had a lot of images. This one? All of them. I'm not sure what you're asking. Uh, I'm, I'm asking, once you get to this page, you click on an image, it takes a long time to get to the next page. Oh, yeah, well, it doesn't now because it's already cached in my browser, but I'll try a different one. That all has to do with the cache, and I best bet that you do not use cache in your website, correct? idea i'd like to develop to do it well do you have somebody developing the site other than yourself yes okay and they haven't told you whether the site is um, being cached or not no you want to test this page because that's going to tell you a lot I'll share. OK. 
can everybody see? Let's see, where is that? And that's the right one. Okay. So if we analyze that page where you have all those pictures, let's see what we can find out. And I would bet that the amount of time it's taking to uh, diagnose, you probably don't have any caching. Well, you might have some because it's doing a lot better than I had anticipated. But it's still well, not. When I, when I first started coming to your group, uh, I went back to my portfolio page and I optimized all of the pictures. But I didn't know about Web3. Web, Web P or whatever it is. Oh, the uh, extension, the Web P format? Yeah. I did them all PNG and, you know, we'll take the lowest one, JPEG or JPEG. So that's a, that's a good place to ask my next question. Does any, do, uh, hmm, hello, move my tongue out of the way. Do all of you understand at this point the process of Reducing. Linda, you had a question. Go ahead. Oops, I guess I got to unmute you first. Go ahead. Okay, great. Hey. <laughs> um, yeah, I had a question. Uh, well, I have a three meg a photo. I do a lot of photos, and I just did the performance on my website and at seventy percent. So I guess that's you know better than. Yeah. <laughs> with with sure what it means. you did yeah. the uh, you use PageSpeed okay. Insight. Yes. And did you you did you go to the page that has that three megabyte picture? Then I I never uploaded it on my um my to my WordPress site yet, but I just did loaded it in the library. It took the three meg um image and it converted it to six hundred and forty eight kb. So um. Now that's happened automatically just in the back end of my WordPress site. Um, and when I was building my new website with my WordPress people, um, you know, we, you know, we made sure all the pictures that we put up uh, were, you know, what they should be. Now I have been over the last year been uploading a lot of pictures and, you know, I, I really tried to keep them smaller, like, um, you know, whatever the pixel should be for, um, you know, for most uh, nails or, you know, of course, for that or um, for the full pictures. Um, but it seems like it's already doing a lot of the, um, you know, the resizing that I don't have to do it in paint. Yeah, it could be depending on, what, depending on what plugins they're using. Mm -hmm. You know, if they're using Imageify or um, right. Short Pixel or something like that, then you can uh, configure those to actually resize and uh, compress them and, you know, uh, reformat them into and serve them as a web feed. You know, so there are plugins that will do that. And I know when we were building the website, we, the way the theme is for WordPress that I'm using, um, the template the theme, um, you know, most of my photos, in my uh, pages are square for the most part. So I really try to keep it that, but other than what we did do and what I do now, um, this is the first I'm, you know, hearing about performance and so forth and so on. Oh, so, really? Um, I don't know what 70 means on my website. But well, the number, out there. the number that you get is between zero and 100%. The closer you are to 100% tells you that that, page if if you're loading it 100 percent that means the mobile page speed for that set the performance is 100 percent which means it loads immediately now the the lower it gets then that's the slower it is for a uh, mobile device you have uh, mobile device users generally give you three seconds for a page to load mm -hmm. or they leave because it didn't load fast enough Mm -hmm. So what you're looking for is a minimum of 70, 
and you look at the numbers in performance, it'll tell, it'll show you. Even at 70, I think you still might be over that three seconds. But mm -hmm. you're closing in on the issue. So you want to make sure that you can load the page, whatever is on that page, load the page in under three seconds. And that's why we're taking the time today to just talk about images, because those are the main thing that slowed, slowed down any uh, page. Now, with you using uh, WordPress, I'm surprised uh, Arthur didn't mention this, because um, if you're using WordPress, when you upload an image, it's going to create three. So you've got desktop size, mid -mo uh, tablet size, and then you've got mobile size. So that one image that you're going to upload is preparing for the other devices to come to the page. So yes, it's creating these other images, but you still need to start with the one image that is as light as possible and only takes up the space that is necessary. How do I assess that? Because the three meg, even if I cut it in half with paint, you know, you know, 1.5 megs, I, I, I just have to keep checking it to see how it looks for clarity. I mean, because it's, it, you yeah, don't photos, don't worry so. about your clarity because the clarity, like I was saying, if you're starting out with X, you're going to get 72 DPI in your browser. So it doesn't care. Right. It doesn't matter what right. it is. So is there a formula or something? This is where I'm a little confused. Okay. It's, you know, when I take these photos with, you know, my high-res cameras or I get photos, um, mm -hmm. project photos, I mean, how do I, how do I know how much I should down then upload them the place that you're going to pr place the image the spot where the image appears generally speaking you have in the templates the theme that you're creating mm -hmm. it's showing you a specific size and let's just say for uh argument's sake there's nothing indicating what size image you should use in x spot I can tell you one thing, if you've got a three megabyte picture, it's gigantic. Doesn't make any difference. I don't care what dimensions you say that it might be, but three megabytes is a huge picture. Right. So when you decrease the dimensions, it's also taking weight out of the picture. And that's one of the reasons why I couldn't find anything, even a meg on my computer, because I know I'm just not going to touch a gigantic picture. I don't need one that size. Mm -hmm. And I'm not looking for one that is a 300 or plus DPI. Your camera is taking that 300 plus DPI. Mm -hmm. You're not going to get that. Even if you try, no matter what you do, you will end up with 72 DPI. Mm -hmm. So crop the image. And if you don't have anywhere that says you need an image this size, mm -hmm. upload an image that you think is the right size for that spot. Okay. Then look at, and in Firefox, it's easy. I'm trying to think of, uh, while I'm doing this, um, Arthur, you use Chrome more than I do. So what would you do to check the size using Chrome? Generally, what I what I do is I you know, I whenever I build sites, I usually recommend the images to be for background images, fourteen hundred by nine hundred or twelve hundred by nine hundred, and then portrait images six by four fifty. You know that's how I determine it. And once you keep your images to that specific standard then you're not you're not going to have a big problem because they'll pretty much line up and fit the same containers you know and that kind of thing so, but you know, the, but i uh, i keep them in the same ratio like four to three uh 16 mm -hmm. to nine you know for like landscape or uh, background you know mm -hmm. i mean once once you leave the ratios you get some kind of weird ratio 
then you're going to have, you know, you're going to have fitting problems. You know, there's a lot of people right. who just crop an image and not maintain the ratio. And when they do that, then you got three images in a row. They're all one side or the other. Yeah. You know. Okay. Mm -hmm. And you know, basically, I just keep everything in the same ratio. You know, so we just add, you know, how the camera takes it. Mm -hmm. I mean, the standard is what four to three or three to four to three, isn't it? Four to so, three. Mm -hmm. Yeah. As long as you keep it keep it in that ratio, then just you know break it down to you know resize it so that if you need. You know. Let, let me see if I can ex, um, give you an example of ratio, because that can be confusing. And if you didn't want to get into that. The main thing that you're doing is taking whatever image that you open and like in paint or whatever uh, program that you're using, it's going to ask you if, when you try to resize, if you want to maintain whatever ratio that picture has. The answer is yes, unless you want some really obscure image and you're going to do that because you have some reason to. So if you open an image in your editing software, it has the ability to maintain the aspect ratio. That's all you really need to know. Just maintain that. So I don't know what it is. Just keep it so that it works the same. Does that make sense, Linda? Did I lose her? Muted. Again? I didn't remute her. Where did she go? Oh, she dropped out. Well, that's, oh, there you are. <laughs> sorry. Now I'm the, oh. I unmuted myself because I thought we were done. So, <laughs> sorry, I didn't, know, I didn't know what you had to unmute Well, what I was, what I'm trying to get to is that um, you've got a, you've got an image and whatever the size and whatever dimensions that is and arthur's right as far as the ratio but if you're if that just tripped you up and you're going i have no idea how to do that let your image software do that for you maintain the aspect ratio of the original image so that you can manipulate it and not have to think about that it's important what he said so if i have this checked then it's going to maintain that aspect ratio. If I uncheck that, I can make the dimensions anything I want. That's when you need to know, is it the correct ratio? And if you go, I don't know, at the end, well, then you're in trouble. Yeah. So keep that checked. So when whatever size I make this, let's say I'm going to go um, 200 in width, it automatically adjusts the height so that when I say OK, it still maintains that aspect ratio. So I didn't have to think. All I did was, well, I think I wanted 200. Or, no, I didn't like that size. Let's try 300. So see how you can go back and forth without saving. And I'm not doing anything. Bang. I don't even care about the resolution because you're only going to get 72. And you can, after you've changed the size of it, then you save it, and then you optimize it. All of these steps are making that image the size that it must be for where it's going to appear, and it's going to reduce as much weight from that picture as possible. So your three megabyte picture, and if I go back and let this go back to the original, I don't know if you not noticed, but up at the top of this resize window, so the new size is 2.5 megabytes. So we already know that's a big picture. And yet when I save it, that whatever I'm doing, it has reduced a lot of it. And you save it as a WebP right out of paint. Just by saying, okay, I'm going to change yeah, it. You can take a 3,000, 4,000 uh, uh, pixel uh, image, you know, and just save it to a 1200 by 900 or a uh, uh, four, four to three or 16 to nine or whatever 
ratio and it'll reduce uh, the blown of it quickly. You don't need images that large on your website. No. I mean, even though there are plugins that will, um, that will by automation, will take care of that, you still have that size and you still have that big of an image on your server, you know, which takes up a lot of resources. So, I mean, that's like I said, I, as a rule, I just, for any website that I optimize images for and I do all that, I just, I just, Pick three basic sizes, you know, background, portrait, and landscape. Mm -hmm. And then I make all the images. I stick with that standard for all the images. Mm -hmm. uh, so that way, you know, if you if you got if you got three images in, the, in in a row, you want them all the same size. You know, because a lot of times, if they're not, then you got everything that's all jumbled and it makes your website look, you know, mm -hmm. unprofessional, it looks amateur. Mm -hmm. you know? mm -hmm. I think we kept ours 500 of 500 in a square theme most of the pages. I usually, when I add photos to a gallery or whatever I'm going to do, I do find that um, it sizes it appropriately. Um, those pictures, I just loaded it up into my library just to see if it would, you know, take it down, you know, without even putting it on a page. I just loaded it into the library to see how much it uh, it changed it from pre meg then it went to 648. Um, I wanted to ask a question about the short pixel application. Um, it says something about to check your website, because I guess my next question after all that is, is there any way to check what images on the on your website are causing problems or anything like that? Hmm. Show no, me you, or do I just go yes. into my library and just no, there, make there's sure a it? There's a way. Let's let's take a look at your site, if we can. Is that okay? Sure. Yeah. Okay. What's the site? Gothicstone.com. Who? Gothicstone. G O T H I C S T O N E. Put it in the chat. G O T H. No, it's optic. Oh, uh, hold on just a second. I think I just, oops, nope. Okay, put it in the chat. We, I, it's not coming through. It's, it's like you keep getting a, a, a letter or two that I'm not getting on my side. I was say, I thought that we'd been there before, but gothic. That's right. Okay. So, should we just, we can, and now, uh, Chrome does it differently, and there are, there are ways that you can do, let's just see, Chrome does this, which you can go to any image and just say inspect, or any spot on your website and say inspect that spot. And then as you go down in this code, you don't have to really understand it. You're just looking mm -hmm. for the image itself. Okay, so I've highlighted that spot, and now I'm going to click on that div that has the uh, triangle next to it. And if you click on that, it opens up more. What you're looking for is the image itself. And it looks like that's a background image. In this area, so I'm not getting... The actual you image. Ask him how to diagnose the problems with the site. Let me try this. Yeah, that's what I'm trying to get to is the image itself to show a picture. Even though this isn't the same one, this is what you're looking for, the image mm -hmm. and the size. It's showing you there. So if there is a problem, you can inspect um, and it will show you that this one has a problem. I don't see any in particular that have a problem but i was interested in this large picture which you're using as your background now because i use firefox i can go up to tools page info and i'll show you this little screen that just pops up here then i go to media and now i can look at each 
image that you have on the page. Mm -hmm. So this is the background image that you've got. Mm -hmm. So you see what I'm, let me see if I can make this a little bigger. So that you understand, here's your background image that we're looking at. Now, the original size is 2560 by 3413. See this line right here? Yeah. That's telling you the size the image is and that it has been scaled. In other words, the, the system, WordPress and the browser are scaling that image down to fit best. That is a problem right there. If you have an image, and let's go to a different one. This one, perfect. It's 2560 by 3413. Okay. So where does that one appear? Um, there is a rotation. Sorry, what was that? In the home. So that image is... That's a huge image. So I'm trying to see if I can find where that's appearing on the page. It should be right below the header image. Is that this one, the veneer or the pool? You know the site better than I do. That's why I'm asking. I couldn't hear. I couldn't hear you at all. Oh, you were saying. Okay, I'll go back. Okay. If I'm looking at the images, and I, I the, see um, streaming is not working. Well. Hold on, and I see this. That one I know is the header. Then the next one down. Mm -hmm should be very close with the trees and that do you see the patio and everything the furniture mm -hmm. okay i'm looking for that picture on the page yeah it's it, it, see the the top if you go back up the top where the first image was there's some arrows on the right so the rotation okay, okay so that's another header right. image okay exactly it's another header image see how on the right there uh, it has, it's the theme that, that you know, and it uh, should be optimized. There it is. I mean, this is there what I don't is. understand. Yeah. It should be optimized by WordPress. They, no. they are optimized. I mean, they're being served. You're, you're running a Genesis framework on okay. WordPress, and mm -hmm. the images are running WebP. They're, they're converted. Mm -hmm. Okay, so let's let's back up before you go into something else. I want to get to that specific image and disagree. Even though the image itself is a JPEG, and Arthur is correct that uh, WordPress is converting it to WebP, I'm going to be honest to say I don't know if that is going to give you the same end result that you would get if you took that JPEG and made it a WebP and uploaded it as a WebP. Oh, definitely. But I do see that the size that it's being displayed is 2560, or excuse me, but is 1904 by 2536. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's a gigantic picture for a page, mm -hmm. especially when we're not looking at 2536 unless the image is hidden behind this header. Is that true? The top menu and the name of the site, yeah. is that that's overlapping the images? Yeah, the header, yeah, the header. The, Just, the, the section, the header is over top of the uh, hero section there. Yeah, rather than... That's normal design, yeah. Rather than starting underneath the header, the hero is back behind the header. Mm -hmm. And what we're seeing is an area that is nowhere near 2536 in height. Does 
Does that make sense? I'm going to prove that point. Go over here and paint. Bear with me. Okay, so now I'm going to reshare. I'm in here. Hey. Who are you hosting with? A WSI. Views Digital Marketing. It used to be a WSI. You know, WSI franchise. Um, no, who they are? They're a, Heard of them, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Some for years. This is my third website. Oh. A brand new theme. I mean, huh. Okay, yeah. the, the image stated, in fact, that the information on the site stated that the image was 2,500 plus dimensions or uh, pixels in height. Yet the area that we see is only 574. Mm -hmm. Okay. So that's what, basically a third of the picture? Mm -hmm. So two thirds of the image is there and adding a tremendous amount of weight. But you're not displaying it, so why do that? Okay. Does that, is that confusing you? Um, well, I'm not, um, what I see on the screen is less than what I see on the little image that's below it. Um, you know I mean, I'll do the, so I'll, I'm not sure. I'll highlight I mean, this I again. Could crop, well, I could just check everything that's in the home page and this, you know, the images and just upload and just put in another image. Yes. Well, see, follow sure with me for follow with me for a second, see if this makes sense to you and stop me at any point that it's confusing. Okay. This is exactly I just took a screenshot of the site. Mm -hmm. And you can see you've got my stupid stuff from uh, Zoom in there. Mm -hmm. sure. um, now, if I take my cursor over here on the left and just mm -hmm. highlight what we see of that background image, you see me highlighting it now, correct? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I'm going all the way over to the right side, right mm -hmm. where the um, scroll bar is. And now the the area that's highlighted is 1876 by 579. So this is a way that you can also go, wait a minute. This is the size that I'm seeing. But if I go back over to show you this share, yeah. here is what you've got. And what we're seeing right there is that 500 plus in height and only 1800 plus in width. The size of the image that you're using is, is 2560 by 3413. That's the original image size. What's being displayed is 1904 by 2536. Right. So you could literally crop a bunch off the top of this thing and even a bit off of the sides to make it the size that this theme is saying this is what the size should be. So the browser and okay. the theme and everything are telling you we're only showing you 1904 because that's what all the code is telling me that it should be. Mm -hmm. So resize that image to fit there, which means that you would be able to, to crop off everything from the top of the pillows up. Okay. That's going to save a tremendous amount of weight because the image itself is gigantic. And it has to be, mm -hmm. that's, are you saying this is one of the two meg pictures? Um, I don't know what this one is. I could look at it and see. I, mean, I, I wouldn't doubt that it is. library. But. 
I wouldn't doubt that it is, but that is one place to start to say, okay, let's reduce the dimensions of this image. As okay. you reduce, as you crop off the dimensions, you are going to see that you save a tremendous amount of weight. And that's before you even optimize the image or save it as a WebP. Okay. Is this making more sense? Yes, I'm not sure what you're saying, a WebP. What does that mean? Oh, that's a uh, that's like JPEG is a format, PNG is a format, WebP right. is a format. The WebP oh, okay. is for most images until you get down to the really small ones. WebP will generally make it a lighter weight image than either the JPEG or the PNG. WebP is, is, is converted to HTML rather than an image. It's, it basically, it's basically, it's not really an image. It's just code. Okay. And I yeah. can do that in paint? I can save it as a... Yes. Oh. It's just as you, when you save as, you know, you've got the picture up, you've cropped it, and you're ready to save mm -hmm. as something, instead of okay. saving it as a PNG or a JPG, you'll see WebP. So you go, okay. oh, there it is, save as a WebP. Okay. Yeah, you just have to make sure that your server is allowing upload of a WebP. Because some servers don't allow it. That's why there's plugins to do the conversion. The same thing with SVGs. There. You know, a lot of times WordPress, depending on the server and your hosting, they won't allow it to upload. So, okay. I mean, I'm not familiar with what the limitations are on your hosting. So, I mean, just try it. Just convert one to WebP. Mm -hmm. and if it uploads, great. All right. Yeah, I will try. I will try this for this uh, home page. I just, I just was looking on my iPhone here. I put up my website and just to see if there were any, you know, performance issues. You know, bringing up my website, looking at pages, and I don't seem to have any issues uh, with speed. Um, you know, with bringing up different pages, different, um, you know, and it's it's you know maybe two seconds, but I scroll right through and the pictures come up. I mean, there may be one or two that maybe. Play. I could look at those we see if, if they could be reduced more, but most of the pages load very fast. I guess well, the, pages, the pages are going to load fast because you're because of the caching. You know, it's that initial when somebody visits your site for the first mm -hmm. time, mm -hmm. there's no cookies, there's no cache, and that thing. And that's the true speed of the site. That's right. why you need to use incognito when you test your site because right. there's no caching. Right. But once it's cached, then it's cached for people who return. It'll, it'll look quick, you know, which is, you know, the whole reason. Why oh, I that. guess. Oh, okay. Thank you, Arthur. Well, I guess maybe one of the things I could do is go in incognito, look at my website, and um, see if there are any pages or images or whatever that are slow, you know, in, I mean, should I do that? Is that a good test? Yes. I okay. do mean, you can either use incognito or like I was saying at the beginning and, and it posted the uh, uh, URL for page speed insights. You know, go to page speed insights if you didn't want to use incognito or use them both and compare. Okay. But page speed insights is going to give you, and if you're looking at this screen right now, this is your site. Okay. So, oh, it's 56 performance. Yeah. Well, it's 70 when I did it. That's why you need to make sure that where you are testing it and how. Okay. Yeah, because yes. where you're testing it, in, in Lighthouse, it's going to pick the browser or the, uh, the CDN, the server that's posted mm -hmm. to you. Mm. you know, so, I mean, there mm. are, uh, I'd, have to, I'd have to check my bookmarks, but there are, um, websites you can test your site where, where it checks it across the world, you know, loading from China, loading from Russia or whatever, you know, 
And I mean, all you can really do is just optimize it the best you can. I mean, there's no silver bullet, you know, to make it perfect. That's not going to, you know, I mean, throughout the world, I mean, that's, that's not possible. But, you know, just knowing, you know, what, what tools to use and, you know, and how to read it. And if you look at Thomas right there, he's got, these are all the options, the opportunities that that's going to show you what needs to be improved on the website mm -hmm. because it's more than just images when it comes to speed. You know, image is not the only thing that flows down a website. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, your images may be all WebP, they may all be size correct and everything else, but you still may have a small site. And that could be anything from a slow server to um, access the JavaScript. I mean, mm -hmm. all kinds of things, you know, and the, the reason why I was asking who you were hosting was is because one of the opportunities there is to reduce initial service response time. And if you look at that, it says 1.42 seconds, you know, so, you know, sometimes you scroll down, you'll see that, yep, right there. So the server, it's taking the server one and a half seconds to, to send the information to the browser and back. Mm. You know, so, you know, if you were on a light speed server, you wouldn't have that. You know, so that's why I was asking who you're using for hosting. Who, you, yeah. who do you host with? I host with um, same people. We went and use digital marketing. What? Um, you host with who? Use Digital Marketing. It's a WSI. Um, we service the internet. We simpl well, no, we simplify the internet. They're, they're franchisees of, I'm not sure who they are franchisees of. So you own, this is WordPress, and you own the site, correct? I mean, gothicstone.com, mm -hmm. URL. Yeah, I mean, it's a WordPress, and you can move it anytime you want, correct? Yes, correct. What you generally will find in hosting, there are a lot of times that you'll come across somebody that says, yeah, I can host you for this price. Go, wow, that's a really great deal. They might be, they might be a, a reseller, and depending on how they got their, system, their uh, reseller account yeah. set up, they have to go through the hosting company and then go to their uh, parts of hosting they may not have a situation that it's a very fast server. I don't necessarily recommend going with the reseller just for that reason. Mm -hmm. But if you know that the reseller is the same speed as something else, then as the main host, that's okay. Um, the only There are two hosting companies that we recommend, and, and you've been to a lot of meetings, and you know we only tell people about A2 or Green Geeks because they use light speed servers. And who are they again? Green Geek and who else? A2hosting.com. A2 hosting. Okay. I'm, I'm definitely not opposed to switching out any, you know. Um, Make sure you get the right my package, you know, because even they have the lowest yes. price of servers. I mean, if, if you go to Green Geek, I always recommend the premium you know, it's pricey, but you're going to have a fast website. You what know, is pricey? Because I might already be paying it. <laughs> probably are. I mean, uh, Green Geeks for the, for the first trial is, uh, whether it's A1 right there or A2 hosting, you know, and for just basic web hosting, you know, it's uh, eight ninety nine for 12 months, and then after the year, it goes up to 24 99 a month. And it, it's, managed, it's managed server hosting, though, see. Mm -hmm. Now, this one I'm showing you is not a managed WordPress, but you see four, four different types of accounts. And the first two would not use Lightspeed, but the turbos do. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Correct. And you're going to, and you can compare just by clicking on the compare all the features in any one of them. So it's $5.99 for the first year, 
And of course, they're going to say you need to pay for X amount of time in advance. Mm -hmm. Where they show was the price that it was, that's what you would pay after your initial account, whether you paid for one year or two years or three years. After that time is up, then you would pay mm -hmm. that $20.99 for a month. Yeah, whenever I, I look at hosting, I look for the memory. You know, and, you know, I want at least three to four gigabyte of memory. You know, if you, especially if you got a lot of images and videos and, you know, if you're going to have the plan on expanding and growing and that kind of thing. I mean, you don't necessarily have to have four, but to me, one gigabyte is not enough. You've got to have at least two. Yeah, that's that's why I'm agreeing there. Even this cheap one, it is cheap. Mm -hmm. It's a megabyte, and it doesn't use light mm -hmm. speed, so you know, pass that one by. And that's mm -hmm. the way that hosting is going these days. It's we used to use the server that was the cheapest because it didn't matter. Today, speed is such a huge thing. It's a huge part of SEO because of Google. Mm -hmm. They're just not going to show the results of the, of a slow website to the mobile users. And if roughly 70% of those who are searching can't see the site because it's not going to be displayed in the search results, well, then you're really, you're just uh, kicking yourself in the rear end. Yeah. Was that uh, TurboMax, has it got a dedicated IP? You can get a dedicated IP. I think it's like $4 extra in most any one of the packages. Okay. Well, well Green Geeks gives you the... Uh dedicated IP and right now they've got it for $8.99 a month and it's uh, for the uh, for the premium package which is basically the same as what the turbo is and what about uh, your email I have an email all my emails with uh, free with... you have as many email addresses as you want that's free yeah yeah depending on how your email is hosted you know, if you're hosting, if you're hosting, if your emails are hosted with your uh, hosting right. now, with your domain, yeah, yeah. But then when they move, generally with the C panel, uh, I'm not sure how A2 does it, but I know what Green Geeks does. But they just migrate the whole C panel. Mm -hmm. That way you don't have to change your SSL, you know, or anything. It just migrate the whole thing, and you know, um, and all your email, everything goes with it. And storage, what I mean, normally it's not unlimited. I know I don't take so much. Well, it's kind of it's kind of tricky because in most of the decent packages that A2 has, they'll say that it's unlimited. What that means is when you reach a certain uh, amount of space that you've used, they allow you to go further. But if you're way out of line, you know they're going to let you know, say, hey, you're getting close to blah blah. Mm -hmm. But down at the bottom, you can see all the pricing. Mm -hmm. There really isn't anything in A2. And I haven't gone through all of Green Geeks, but I bet they're the same. They're not hiding stuff. In these cheaper sites, even in GoDaddy and stuff, well, they hide a lot. They're not going to tell you that this is this and this is that. Yeah. Then they try to hit you with security that you must have. They always yeah. tell you that. And they charge three times what the norm is for security. You know, I mean, that's, that's one of the biggest things I know about GoDaddy that, you know, is just outrageous. You know, because all they do is they, just off, they serve it off to a third party and then they, they double the price. So now you're paying three times for what normally would cost you, mm -hmm. um, say $10 a month. You know, well, GoDaddy, you're going to be paying $49 a month for that. That's the same package. Wow. Okay. Yeah. And so Green Geek and A2 hosting they secure, you know, secure website. See my yeah. mouse? I knew you were gonna get to that. Okay. It's all included, yeah. Hmm. Wow. The only time you really need the added security, and I know there's people out there that disagree with me, but um is if you run an e commerce site. Right. You know, a membership site where you've got personal information, you know, and that mm -hmm. kind of thing. But if you're running the average site like a normal business does, I mean, 
you don't need the, 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 all that security for, you know, and, and, like what GoDaddy is trying to sell you. I'm, I'm going to add security. Don't get me wrong, <clears throat> you know, but there's better options than and having I, to pay. You know, in other words, don't be scared into it. You know, they use a scare tactic. You know, so they say we well, got to have this. You know, this will happen. <laughs> I mean, they're trying to sell you. You know, I mean that's their business. You, know. you need. I I want to add to that too. It is imperative to have a secure site how secure that's the division line and like arthur was saying if you're running an e-commerce site if you're not storing information then you can use the uh, the free ssl like a2 or green geeks has mm -hmm. if you are storing information whether it's the username or the passwords mm -hmm. or especially credit cards you need you should have a specific SSL just for your site. Mm -hmm. Well, it's not only the SSL, it's the server security that you need. Mm -hmm. You know, the SSL is one thing, but uh, if you're, you know, having personal information on your site, mm -hmm. then you got to have the security on the server too. You know, and that's what GoDaddy tries to, you know, tries to push on you. And there's nothing wrong with that. I mean, it's definitely a good thing, but, you know, for what they're, charging you yeah. overkill right yeah. Yeah. wow this has been very enlightening oh wow um and well, somebody else said something here in the chat uh for me the biggest advantage that green geeks has is their excellent free 24 7 tech support which is exactly what a2's got 24 7 doesn't make any difference what it is and it's free they also migrate your site for free so if you decide that you're going to host with them they say, okay, where are you hosting now? We'll go over and bring the site over for you. Yeah. It's good to see a it's good to see a Green Geeks fan here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, they're, they're top notch. I mean, they're 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 one of the best out there. I've been doing this for years, you know, and everything else is just really falling off this, you know. And it seems like these two here are the ones that are really mm -hmm. They're really what they say they are. Or you know, is great. You know, so. Hey, there's one last thing that you you're going to come up against, and a lot of people don't consider it. But you should think about what you pay for your domain every year. Um, uh, oh, yeah. I've seen uh, GoDaddy, and I think it's Squarespace. Um, they charge, what is it, somewhere in the neighborhood of uh, 24, 24, 25 bucks a year, right. plus mm -hmm. another $15 a year if you want the contact privacy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know what I pay a year with contact privacy? 16. Mm. I don't even pay that. And, and, I could pay two dollars more and get the uh, contact privacy. Where even if the uh, authorities came and say we need to have access to that information, they'll say, "Too bad, pal, you're not going to get it." Now, with their mm -hmm. typical contact privacy, which means you don't have to pay extra for it; it's just part of your uh, domain registration. You have contact privacy. That increased security is what you get if you wanted to pay a little bit more. But $15, $16 a year, that's all you should be paying for a, a domain registration. Green Geeks is $13. Bucks. Green Geeks is $13. Oh my gosh. Yeah, well, mm -hmm. once you move, you know, once you move your, uh, you get the whole thing stuff and you get to transfer your domain. See, they're, they're not a reseller. Right. Not a, uh, um, they don't sell right. no, no mm -hmm. domain name. Mm -hmm. But that host them, you know, and then mm -hmm. they just charge. I mean, I don't even think they mark it up, to be honest. I mm -hmm. mean, they might make a couple dollars off for internal mm -hmm. fees, you know, but, you know, but yeah, yeah, I paid, yeah, I paid uh, 13 bucks for it. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. I, mean, I'm I must say, yeah, I mean, a, a lot of, you know, a lot of the support I do get from the reseller is more like how to type of support. 
or that I'm having a problem with a page and they will fix it for me. I mean, I imagine that's the kind of technical support that Green Geek would do. Uh, you know, if I even put something up or like, you know, just you know, the blogs I do or whatever, or any image stuff, sometimes you know, I, I had a problem because I wasn't, you know, cleaning my cache enough and or um, or I just needed to clear my data, my cookies and all that kind of stuff, stuff which wasn't working properly. So they helped me with that. So who well, knows that the kind of thing that Green Geek would do? And A2 Green both. Geek, you, you have a caching plugin called LS Cache and you're able to clear your own cache and all that. Now, as far as actual website help, you know, if you need the information about WordPress or how to do something in WordPress, mm -hmm. they don't offer that kind of thing. Yeah, right. You know, right. But, right. you know, but they're, you know, it, it's managed hosting basically is what mm -hmm. it is. You yeah. know, I mean, they watch, you know, uh, they take care of the server and, you know, and, and you're, you do what you do, you know. All right. Wow, you guys are a wealth of information. <laughs> Fantastic. Well, I mean, the support you offer, it's just, you know, um, it's light speed. I, I, I don't know whether I, the uh, company I use does use that. I will ask that question, though. But I think I'm going to switch. I, I usually uh, rehost every uh, June, so <laughs> I'm going to go with that. <laughs> once, you, once you switch to A2 or Green Geeks, you'll stop that. Yeah, you won't be wanting yeah. to leave. You just go. Never you'll mind. Notice, Why? You'll know. Yeah, you'll notice the difference. Yep. Right away. Yes. I mean, you, you're, it, it'll be so fast that you. you know, oh my god. Uh, Perfect. Well, that's that one that I that site that I showed you earlier. He was getting at best a sixty-five in page speed mm -hmm. on the home page. Yeah. And I tweaked the uh, uh, light speed. Uh, plug-in in WordPress and popped him up to 98. And that's because he's on a light speed server. So it, okay. it didn't mandate. He's still, he could get it a lot faster if you make sure to, to optimize the five, four or five images on the home page that need to be. But mm -hmm. if you're on an eight, if you're on a light speed server, the speed that you can get is fantastic. 90, you'd be, okay. You should be angry if you're not 98 to 100. If you're not right. getting that kind of speed, then it's a matter of tweaking the mm -hmm. settings. And well, you can do all that within her, WordPress. Sorry, what? Got my tent about her site was she's running, her site's running Genesis framework. Mm -hmm. You know, and then the, the images are run, you know, they're WebP, they're converted, they're compressed. I mean, uh, I mean, she has some minification that needs to be done, but that can be done, you know, with LS CAD, without a problem. Mm -hmm. And then I saw that server response time. You know, I you know, yeah, I saw that too. Yeah. I was going to say something just before you did, but you got you beat me to it. We were both watching that thing and going, wait, that server is not doing you any justice. Okay. A second and a half seems like such a small amount of time. But talk to the people who use their mobile devices because they're only giving you three. You get three seconds to deliver your page to them before they leave. Mm -hmm. That's okay. they have no patience. Mm -hmm. I I don't either. <laughs> <laughs> I totally get it. I'm off sites faster than it. It's like I want it like this. I'm not looking at my own. That's for sure. Well, you have a, a few things to do with the images, but. Um, don't stress over the details and, and the specifics of all the things that you can do because if you get the basics and you're on a, a light speed server, that's going to uh, rectify most of the issues that you have for speed. Even, you know, maybe I forgot to resize it fully or I didn't optimize those images. Light speed will probably just go. That's okay. We're going to take care of that. When you cache yeah. something, it's taking the information and it's like on your computer. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know if you know anything about how the computers work, but basically cache is just a place to store uh, temporary information. Mm -hmm. Yep. And then every so often it says, okay, we're going to clear it and regather it. Mm -hmm. And you can, you can clear it yourself manually if you want to. 
and then it mm -hmm. will recache. But the idea is when you take a bunch of information from that page and store it, that page loads so much faster. It's like you've been to that page many times. And that could be a first time user goes to that page and it still loads screaming fast. Yeah, that's the most important part is when they first visit your site. Mm -hmm. once, they, once, they, once they download the cookies and stuff yeah. and it's in their browser, then it'll just load every every time they come back. You know, mm -hmm. but it's that initial, um, in the initial first time hitting that website mm -hmm. that's what google looks at you know and if it's you know if it's slow then you know you're probably not likely to get a rank bill all right and when you it impresses <laughs> users week session and this week's session <laughs> I think a lot of work to do over the holidays when everybody else is having fun well, except oh, Arthur and I will probably be doing work like this. <laughs> I don't have holidays. I'm yeah. On vacation. <laughs> well, it's a holiday. Oh, gosh. Well, if you need any more information, feel free to connect with either one of us. And Definitely. Ask I, questions. I, I will. I, I need to do a little bit of down my NL ranking work for SEO stuff. And also now this, uh, I suspected I was. No, um, images might be a problem, and because uh, I, I have been loading up more and more, and uh, you know, I'll, I'll that uh, like uh, uh, so speed or whatever it's called, I have it. Um, I'll, I'll see what it says and uh, see what I can do. But I'm definitely changing to Green Peak. There's no question about it. Well, I, I would um, recommend that you work on the page's performance, and then go back and do your SEO. So that way, at least Google knows, okay, I can get in. These pages are loading fast and everything seems to be good. Okay. So we'll put it at this point. That puts mm -hmm. you ahead of the game. Now you start working okay. on an SEO and you'll see it get pushed even closer to the page one position. All right. Okay. Good plan. Thank you. You're welcome. We'll see you next week. <laughs> okay. Sounds good. <laughs> Enjoy. You're welcome. Thank you. That's it for this week, folks. I thank you all for coming, and we'll see you next week. I don't know if Bonnie's still here, but we'll see you, Bonnie. <laughs> and Claudia and Marinella, see you next week. Bye, Linda. Bye, Tom. See you, Arthur. Bye, everybody. Take it easy. Take thank it you easy. So much. You betcha. You're welcome. It looks like these people may not be with us anymore. I have to just... Uh, oh, you're still here. Bye, Bonnie. See you next week. <laughs> Thanks for coming. And oops, sorry. Had you muted. What was that? I said thanks for teaching. Sorry? So, thanks for teaching. Oh, you're welcome. You're welcome. Always glad to provide some good information. We'll see you next week. Take it easy. And uh, Claudia looks like she's not here anymore. Uh, <coughs> put into the waiting room. I had a hell of a time getting my internet to work, man. Uh, I never did get the, I have no idea what's going on with um, YouTube, but it's been sitting over here just spinning and spinning and i'm like you know what i give up i set it up the same you way every time oh, it's not connected with obs I, well obs it that was something but that didn't happen until about 30 minutes ago obs shut down and it came back up and said okay we reconnected and i went what oh no shit. so it's a good yeah, thing that i was that recording happen. it does happen it, it was a good thing that I was recording with OBS and Zoom. Yeah, I couldn't. I couldn't get my email to come up. I couldn't get uh, Chrome. I couldn't get Firefox. Nothing. Nothing would pull up, man. And I'm sitting. It, it just started. And it just started happening. You know, so I was on. You know, I was on the phone with Comcast, and 
your Xfinity and all this stuff. They say, oh, everything's fine. Everything's fine. Nothing. The TV's running just fine. You know, I got a good connection there. And, you know, what the hell's going on? So what I had to do is, is I disconnected the uh, Wi-Fi and, uh, um, like, uh, on the computer and then reconnected it. And then everything started working. You know? Oh, really? Yeah, well, I just had a Windows update. You know, here the other day, the other night. Uh, yeah. And you know how Windows doesn't yeah. they'll, they'll yeah. fuck shit up every time, you know. <laughs> yeah, mine wanted to update all day yesterday, and I said, not until I'm done. And then I updated after I was done and checked that everything was working today. But I just get frustrated with YouTube because there are some times it just, bam, it clicks and it's on. And other times it's like, nope, I I'm not going to connect. Know. It's like, God dang it, why can't you just be consistent? That's why I said, man, it's aggravating. It'll aggravate the hell out of you, man. It does me. You know? I, I am I really and it shows that it's excellent right now as far as the stream. I have no idea if it recorded anything or what. I'm gonna shut off StreamYard. 